Hey there, in today's tutorial I would like to show you one way of uh, creating a quick color grade and try to match a color of another image in Photoshop. I have this image here and what I want to do is I want this image to make it look more or less like my reference over here. And the result that I got is this. We will work with uh, curves and uh, channels and histograms so you have to know a bit about how this works in Photoshop but I think it's not a really difficult tutorial. So I hope you will enjoy it and let's get started. Great, uh, in order to make this, I used an image that I got from unsplash.com, which is this one over here. And then I used, for reference, I used a screenshot from a movie, which I have no idea what movie is this. I don't remember, I just Googled movie um, screenshots, but uh, you can, find another image if you want. And what I would like to do is uh, try and make this image look a bit more like this one in terms of color. And uh, for that we will use adjustment layers, basically curves and uh, also the selective color. This is not going to be the most accurate uh, color grading technique that you've seen, but uh, or the most accurate color matching. But uh, until we find another automatic way of color matching two images, um, I know some plugins do that, but um, I just want to do it the old fashioned way, doing it manually. It's funnier, I think. And well, you have the links to these images on my website if you want to use this. And well, let's get started. Before we start, we have to analyze our images. And if you zoom in, well, I'll zoom in a bit. And let's take a look here at our reference. Um, as you can see, the dominant colors here are cyan, blue, green, and also some yellow for some of the darkest highlights. The brightest highlights have not white, but uh, almost white tone. And if you want to be more accurate, you can grab the you can grab the um, eyedropper tool and use the info uh, panel over here. Um, if you go to window, you can select the info or press F8. And here you can take a look at how, uh, well, what colors are dominating here. Uh, for example, um, you can see that here on the brightest highlights, we actually, it's not 100% uh, bright. Uh, if you sample a color here, you'll see that it's, this is actually yellow. Um, and on the info panel, you can see that the red uh, is higher than the rest of the colors, which means red is a dominant color. That's why we have this orange tone. And then the br the darkest shadows are not dark at all. We have this cyan, dark cyan towards green um, tone. Then here on this highlights, we have uh, this yellowish tone, um, green uh, tone there. Uh, the reds are not really red. They're actually a really dark orange, almost red, but not um, pure red. And then here on the mid-tones, the darkest mid-tones, we have this cyan uh, tone. So these are the dominant colors on this image. Also notice that the image that I'm using to color grade is a bit similar to this um, in terms of light. I don't, if you try to color grade uh, an image, for example, an outdoor image, which is shot in uh, at midday uh, with sun uh, glowing there, uh, you will not get a realistic result. So try when you try to color grade an image, use a, um, a reference image that is pretty close to your to your shot. So um, let's go one uh, step further and add our add a curves adjustment. I will add a curves adjustment on top of my reference layer, which is layer two. So let's add a curves adjustment. And the reason why I do this is because I want to clip it. Take a look at the histogram over here. The histogram shows us the amount of highlights uh, and shadows that we have. Here on the left, we have the shadows. And you can see we have a big spike over here. We have a lot of shadows. And as we go towards the highlights on the right, we start to have less and less information. This histogram corresponds to both images. If I clip this to, the, to layer two, which is the reference, you will see how this histogram changes. Here, the histogram is a lot more uniform. We'll, we still have very little highlights and we have a, a uniform amount of um, mid-tones and some a bit more shadows. 
And one other thing that we can do here is if we select this hand icon and hover uh, over our reference image, for example, the highlights, here you can see that color that we sample uh, from here uh, with the eyedropper tool. Uh, let me try and do that. Um, this color corresponds to um, to this, uh, let me grab the hand icon again, corresponds to this part of our histogram. Okay, so if you hover this uh, tool, this hand icon to your reference, you will see a point appearing here moving across this line, well, along this line over there. And this shows us where um, um, this color, for example, over here corresponds to this part of the histogram. So that is cool because, uh, for example, I know that this green over here corresponds to the darkest mid-tones and this uh, here corresponds to some of the darkest highlights, which is nice. Now, I will use the same curves to make my adjustments. So I'll drag it down over my layer one, which is the image that I want to color grade. And I'm going to clip that just so that we don't have the information from the from layer two, which is the reference. And let's start color grading this. Uh, you have several ways of doing it. I will use curves, but you can use the gradient map as well. Let's uh, make a first try with the gradient map so you can see. I'm going to create a new adjustment, a new gradient map adjustment layer. And I will open the gradient. And here we don't have, we don't see the histogram, but this is a representation of the histogram. Here on the left, we have the darkest, uh, well, the shadows. And here on the left, on the right, sorry, we have the highlights. That's why we, re uh, you can see I have this to black. So I remapped the colors. That's why it looks to black and white. And what we can do is first select the icon, not the layer mask, because if you have this selected and you want to sample colors from here, you can see the color that you sample is white because you're sampling from the layer mask. So make sure you select the icon of the adjustment and then open the gradient editor and let's start um, adding colors to our gradient. I'm gonna select the darkest shadows, click on this, and I will sample the darkest shadow from this image over here, which I think is this. And I'm gonna zoom in a bit just so I can see it better. And I'm gonna click over there. That's my darkest shadow over there. Yep. I'm gonna, I'm gonna click OK. Then let's move, maybe create another point over here and sample a color from there. Uh, I think this is too dark. Let's sample another tone, which is not that dark. OK. Then for the highlights, the brightest highlights, which is this light over here, I'm gonna click there. You can see it's not pure white, it's actually uh, really unsaturated yellow, um, orange, sorry, click OK. And take a look at how our image changed there. And we still have to add this zone uh, somewhere here around the mid tones over there. So I'm going to sample this color over here and probably delete this one and just move this around here and probably make this a bit more like that. over there and click OK and OK. And that's my raw gradient map there. I can switch this to color and you see what you get. And if you want to refine it, you can start adding more points here and sample color from your image there. And if you move this uh, um, over here, you can see how you can start to change the aspect of your of your image there. With the gradient map, it's a bit more complicated. Um, you can also try the hue blend mode, but it's not really working that well. So you have to spend a lot more time using the gradient map. Let's try the curves, which is funnier, I think. So I'm gonna open the curves, and here we have to use the channels. We have no other choice. So we have to memorize something here. Um, you have to know the opposite colors of this primary colors that we have here. So we have red, green, and blue. And the opposite of each of these are for the red, the opposite is cyan, 
For the green, the opposite is magenta, and for the blue, the opposite is yellow. So if you want to add yellows, you have to go to the blue channel. Okay, so let's go into the blue channel. And here we want yellow on this darker, well, on the darkest um, highlights, not the brightest ones. Take a look at the histogram here, and you can see that here we have almost no information at all. So if you make changes here, pretty much nothing will happen because we have so little information. So for us, our highlights will start here because this is where the, gra the graphic starts. And if I want to add yellow to these areas, which correspond, I think, to this, uh, yeah, to this brightest highlights and the eyes, I could, for example, click here to add a point. And if you want to add yellow, you have to move this down below this line because we are on the blue curve. And as a rule of thumb, uh, thumb and for easier, um, uh, for, for you to uh, have it easier to remember is if you uh, put the points below this line you will add the opposite color of the one that you selected here which is the blue in this case so I will drag this down and I don't want to affect this shadows too much so I'm gonna add another point here and drag this up to recover my colors there and also for the highlights I want to drag this up like that I just want this part over here to have this yellow tone there now the problem with this is that we um, kind of added a bit of uh, like magenta over here uh, to this side of the uh, of the um, of the histogram. So I have to go to the green because the opposite of green is magenta. Here the green uh, it's basically on this side of the of the um, of the histogram. So I'm gonna drag this up and I'm gonna click and add a point here and drag this down because I don't want to add. Um, too much green on the rest of the image and make sure that this things over here stay to where they should be I'll probably leave this how it was and let's delete some of the points and that's much better maybe it's a bit too extreme so I'm gonna leave it like that great and one other thing that we have to add is cyan you can see a lot of cyan here and for that we have to switch to the red and here we want to add cyan especially to the to, well this side here uh, the darkest mid-tones so i'm going to add a point here and then another one here just to make sure that i don't move those and add some cyan over there like that okay and the image looks too green so let's go to the blue and add some blue. Uh, we added cyan, but we need some blue to um, give this a bluish tone. And for that, we have to move this um, point here up and maybe this one a bit here as well. And I'm th I think I'm gonna leave it like that for now. And as you can see, uh, we already got a big change to the image before and after, but we can um, we can further uh, adjust this by using a selective color adjustment. And you can see that I added the selective color below the curves. And the reason for that is because I want to apply the selective color to the original colors of the image, not to the modified ones. But I still leave the, the curves active because I want to see the change uh, with both adjustments. The reason why I like to use the selective color is because here I can change the whites, neutrals and blacks separately and I can also change the amount of uh, red, green, cyan uh, to the rest of the colors on my image. Reds and yellows usually um, are, the, well, are the dominant colors on the skin tones and then we have the other colors which um, in this case are it's not the case because we have pretty much no other colors here on the image. So we will start with the reds and yellows, which are the skin tones. And here, for example, I can, for the yellows, uh, I can add more cyan. Uh, the change is very subtle. I don't know if you can notice it, but uh, um, it's there, I can see it. And also I can add more blue if I want. Uh, in this case, I'm not gonna add that. Uh, if you use the black slider, this is to brighten up or or darken the tones um, see that and for the reds again I can add more 
red or I can here you will see it better you can add more cyan or you can add more yellow or more blue see that only the face changes and of course I can make it darker or brighter I'm gonna make it a bit darker just to increase the contrast of my image a bit and then uh, notice that the contrast of the image is not really matching this one uh, we will use curves for that uh, we'll go back to the curves and then I can go to the whites which is the brightest highlights and here I can add more yellow uh, for example and more cyan and I can make them brighter or darker maybe a bit no, well let's, let's not change the black because we will use the curves as I said to work uh, on the contrast let's go to the blacks which is the darkest shadows here uh, you will see the change right away so you have to make really small changes for example if I want to add more blue I have to use the yellow and add negative values because remember the blue is the opposite of yellow and you can see the change right away so I have to probably add, add minus two and a bit of cyan seven and let's see if I add green well let's not touch the greens here and let's go to the neutrals which are the bit tones and probably add some yet yeah, some red sorry maybe some cyan and let's not touch the blacks and with the magentas probably let's leave it to zero as well okay so that's my color grading let's go to the curves and work on the RGB to create some contrast um, I'm gonna move this uh, I'm gonna make the typical S curve and that's it not a big change just slight touch there to increase the contrast a bit and you can see the before and after and that's pretty much it uh, I'm done let me show you the before and after as I said it's not the most accurate uh, color grading technique and uh, there are probably better techniques but um, if you want to make a quick color grade and uh, quickly um, match the color of another image you can use this uh, technique it's quite easy if you uh, practice it and that's how you can do it uh, i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we'll see you on the next one